That'd be Tad. Hello? No. Yeah, you have the wrong number. That's okay. You thought he'd call back? Yeah. Well, you know, Junior's been having these nightmares lately. He's kind of been tossing and turning. I forgot to tell him. Oh, it's too bad. Mm. I mean, Tad left Orsini to spend more time with you and the kids. Yeah, but he also wanted a lot more challenges, and the cutting edge is certainly that, despite being a little time-consuming. Well, with a boss like Liza Colby, it's amazing that any of us have any life outside of that studio. Mm. <laughs> you know, she, uh, she cracks her whip, and we jump. <laughs> well, hey, you know, with charisma like hers, you just inspire excellence. Charisma. Inspire excellence, my goodness. Maybe she should uh, go into politics. <laughs> well, Dix, you know that I don't buy into that uh, studio gossip, but, you know, you've been watching that phone. I mean, what are you so worried about Tad and Liza being alone in New York for? What do you think might happen? Well, I know this isn't exactly the latest in executive wear, but I wasn't expecting company. And I hope you're not embarrassed. Ted? Am I making you uncomfortable? No, not, not at all. <laughs> not a bit. Um, but dang it, I'm, I'm not the one standing around in my underwear. Well, you don't happen to have any clever ink-removing techniques, do you? No. No, I, I don't. But if you're feeling cold, uh, there's... Probably a hotel bathrobe in the closet. Yeah, no, closet. It's right there. You are uncomfortable. Really, Dad, women wear less than this at the beach. We're not at the beach. Where are the notes? You know all this bit about being awkward. Maybe it's not discomfort. Maybe it's deja vu. I don't think so. Really? What's so terrible about remembering our past? I mean, Tad and Liza are at the beginning of a working relationship. I mean, things are bound to calm down eventually. Mm. What, you don't think so? Look, I know Miss Colby. Keeping the pressure cranked all the way up is her style. But she's probably having another bad dream. I'll be right back, okay? I mean, unless you, you have to leave. No, no, I'll be here. Okay, thanks. Okay. Really, Tad, the last thing in the world I'd want to do is make you feel uncomfortable. Glad to hear it. I'll just review these. Does your mother still hate me? Which one? Ruth. I mean, I already know Opal does. She's never forgiven me for those stupid schoolgirl pranks I played on your sister Jenny, God bless her soul. Don't talk about Jenny. I'm just feeling kind of sentimental. I mean, don't you remember when we used to Look, cut Liza, class? I don't want you to think I'm being rude or anything, but I, uh, I really think you're wasting your time here. See, the fact is I had uh, a, a pretty serious accident, a bad fall about a few years back. And, um, well, it's the damnedest thing, because ever since that accident, I have a hard time uh, remembering things that happened before 1992. It was a dark and stormy night, 1983. I was a sweet, naive, inexperienced girl masquerading as a young, intelligent young woman, and you were Tad, the Cad. Well, like I said, 1983 is very dim and very, very faded, and uh, 
considering everything that's happening where we are now, I, for one, vote we, we keep it that way. Really, knowledge is power. You taught me that. You also taught me a few other things. After all, you were my first lover. Everything I know now, I learned from you first. Liza, I don't think that either one of us stands anything to gain from some dangerous little detour down memory lane. <laughs> Danger? My mother's favorite aphrodisiac. You're not going to bring Marion into this, are you? No, to raise the crowd. Good, okay. My mother never really understood you the way that I did. To me, then, you were everything. You really don't remember that? No. The first time we made love. We were here in Manhattan. You had a brief modeling career with your sister, Jenny, and you just kept after me and after me, trying to seduce me until finally I let you. Over and over, all night long. Too bad you forgot. You introduced me to love. And knowing me, I probably even forgot to thank you. Well... Knowing me, I probably didn't thank you either. So thank you. You're welcome. Any details you'd like for me to fill you in no, on? No, no, no. Fine, I can uh, just imagine. I mean, um, well, hormone levels were high back there in the 80s. You know what? They've always been high. Our relationship was a lot more than just sex. We had substance. In spite of the fact that you were quite a handful. And what were you? A piece of cake? Oh, but I was young. I had a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. I had a really good teacher. What you lacked in patience, you more than made up for in technique. All things considered, you were a hard act to follow. I have to ask you a favor. Really? What? May I use your phone? Yes. I think a nightcap would do us both good. Champagne. Jason, is that you? Did I dial the wrong number? Ah, uh -huh. Tad, hi. Um, Dixie and I are uh, studying, and uh, she's upstairs right now with Junior. Can I take a message? Yeah, tell her that uh, I'll try to be home tomorrow late morning. Before lunch with any luck. Okay, got it. Anything else? Yeah. Tell her I'm very sorry that I didn't phone her back sooner. That's it. Okay, no problem. Bye. Was that Jason? Jason Sheffield? At your home with Dixie at this hour? They share a couple courses at the university. They're study buddies. He's a very dedicated student. Well, brace yourself, Liza. They've been known to stay up all night. All nighters. I remember those. Don't you think it's weird, though? I mean, the two of them in your house, the kids asleep. I mean, the husband is away. Two scholars poring over a very fascinating psych book. Junior okay? Yeah, he's just having a bad dream. He woke up and he saw some shadows on the wall and thought they were creepy things with oh. big fangs and scales and that sort of thing, so... He got out of bed, he looked in the closet, looked under the bed. <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> Poor kid. Yeah. Things have been rough for him since the summer, you know? That thing that happened at the lake. He thought he saw Jamie drown. Oh. Well, I, I, was, I was bitten by a dog when I was his age. And then uh, I dreamt of wolves. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I wake up screaming and calling for help, but uh, nobody would come and uh, calm me down. My brother Kevin, he dreamt of snakes. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, I don't know anything about kids except how to be one, but uh, I am a guy, and if uh, Junior wants somebody to talk to, I'd be more than happy to go up there. Well, that's very nice of you, but um, he's asleep already. He misses Tad, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, but you know what? We should get back to studying, because we have had enough interruptions for one night. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, it, uh, it's no problem. I'm, I'm not bored. Well, I've just been uh, sitting here, reading. <laughs> so what would you like to be in the future? Do you want to be a producer like Ted? Well, I'd consider teaching if the pay was decent. The love of money is the root of all evil. Tell that to your friend Michael Delaney. <laughs> okay, ooh. Speaking of, how are things? I mean, is Kevin getting better grades? Well, you know, he, he works very hard, but he's not driven. I'm like some people that we know, the charismatic, inspirational Liza Colby. What is your particular definition of um, charisma? Well, Dixie, if, if you think that, uh, if you're worried that I think that Liza's uh, more interesting than... Other women? <laughs> well, uh, like you, for example. Uh, she's not. I'm not worried. I'm just curious, really. I mean, what makes your coworkers like her so much? Is it because she's just a big, hot shot hoo-ha in the business world? Or is it something, I don't know, more personal? I don't know. Uh, she, uh, she just has this, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, um, charm maybe yeah even when she's reaming you out for uh for being late or losing the key to the bathroom <laughs> whatever uh she, you know she never lets anyone forget that she's a woman does she have anybody i mean did she leave anybody back in connecticut or is she um too driven to have a personal life well, i don't know what her deal is but from what i can tell liza colby can have any man she wants. If I had a bright young man with Jason's looks as my study buddy, I don't think I would have graduated college. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Liza. You know, it would be sweet if it wasn't so sad. I mean, you and Dixie, you have this perfect relationship. You share everything, even major bouts of possessiveness. Excuse me, but where is all of this suddenly coming from? You had words with your wife, and you asked her if she trusted you, and... I don't know, Dixie has possessiveness, and so do you. It was just observation, it's not a judgment or anything. It's actually a compliment. I mean, any woman who's married to Tad Martin would be fooled if she didn't keep her eyes open. That's your idea of a compliment? Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't every one of your marriages fall apart for the same reasons? I'll see you first thing tomorrow, 7.30, in the dining room. I guess you see a woman you want, and then you go for it. It's a pattern, it's a habit. You know, people don't change. How would you know? Who asked you? I didn't invite you to come poking around in my private life, Liza. So until I do, you do me a favor. Stay out of it, Earl. I hit a raw nerve. Yeah. I guess you did. See, Liza, here's the thing. For someone like me, 
He's wanted something all his life, something special. Failed time and time again. You're finally lucky enough to grab the brass ring or hit the jackpot. You don't take it for granted. In the case you can't read the subtitles, I'm talking about my marriage. Oh. You're an expert. Kind of. So next time you decide to go bouncing around in your underwear, making observations about me and my wife, by the way, you look great. Keep this in mind. I'm head over heels in love with Dixie, and I have been ever since the first time I laid eyes on her. We have an incredible life together. Kids, a home, a family that neither one of us would do anything to jeopardize. We love and trust each other, Liza, no matter what. We always will. I'm happy for you. I honestly didn't want you to defend your marriage to me. That's my point. It doesn't need defending. I believe you. Good. We're not perfect. Nobody is. We're both stubborn. We fight quickly, but luckily we make up quickly. And if I sound a bit defensive, it's because I've worked like a dog for this family. Dixie and I have both put everything we can into making it work. And nothing, nothing is going to destroy it. Dad, really, I think that you misunderstood me. I'm sure your marriage is glorious. I never meant to imply anything else. I should have kept my mouth shut. I... No, no, don't be silly. Dixie, the only reason why I went on about Miss Colby like that is just because I, I've, I've never been around such a, a hot and, and powerful woman before. I mean, so to me, it's, it's new and, and, and different. And look, if I made things worse, I'm sorry. Come on, there's nothing to make worse. It's fine, okay? I'm the one that's asking all the questions. I'm just, you know, I'm not interested in Liza per se. I find her type just kind of, you know, intriguing. You two are such opposites. I mean, she's she's this barracuda, and you're a... I'm guppy. <laughs> no, no you're, you're an angelfish. A starfish. Well, thank you, I think. <laughs> Dixie, you are an amazing woman. You're loyal, understanding. Oh, you're really a good friend, Jason. Thanks. For being, you know, so patient with me. I think this change of plans with Tad has just really thrown me for a loop, you know? I forgot. He called while you were upstairs with, uh, with, 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 uh, Junior, and, and I picked it up on the first ring. I... Called? What did he say? Um, he just said that he would try to be home tomorrow morning sometime, hopefully before lunch. Oh, good. You know, the phone's upstairs. We turn off, you know, when the kids are asleep, so... Let's sit. Did he say that he was, uh, going to bed? Um, no, he just, uh, asked me to give you that message. Maybe he's in the shower. Or Liza's room. Well, sure. They're, they're uh, planning a strategy. She's a slave driver. I'm not going to call her sweet. If I have to handcuff myself to the balcony, I am not going to call her hotel room. <laughs> Look, I am sorry that I forgot to give you his message. <laughs> You're sorry. My goodness, do you think my reaction could indicate a little insecurity? <laughs> well... Here's what it's like to be human. If only Miss Colby hadn't changed her plans. I'd be in New York instead of Tad, and you'd be here with your husband. 